In the upcoming tutorials, I will be demonstrating how you can create some unique branding opportunities using the Substance 3D tools. Now, I know what some of you are saying. I've been doing logos and branding renderings for years in Illustrator and Photoshop. Why would I want to do it in 3D? I don't even know 3D, and when I tried it before, it was such a pain. Fear not, because in this demo, I will show you how you can simply and easily create some unique branding work using Substance 3D that would be nearly impossible in traditional 2D tools. This is the kind of stuff that will allow you to wow your clients and allow you to differentiate yourself from others in the industry. Okay, for these examples, I'm going to be using my personal brand and logo, as well as the color scheme for some inspiration. We're going to start nice and simple before jumping into some more advanced examples. To begin, let's take a look at our 3D rendering tool called Substance 3D Stager. Think of Stager as our virtual production studio. We bring in objects, make sure they have the right materials on them, add some lighting, render out a Photoshop file, and bring that layered PSD into Photoshop to do our final touch-up work. So let's start by bringing in a 3D model. Stager is amazing because it can bring in all types of assets. It can bring in standard 3D models like OBJs and FBX, but it can also bring in CAD models if you have one of our enterprise licenses. But for this simple example, we're gonna start off with one of our pre-installed models in Stager, our lovely coffee bag. Next up, we're gonna add a material to this bag. Again, I'm keeping it simple and just using one of our default materials here in Stager, the cardboard. I will adjust a couple of the sliders down here in our parameters pane and get the look I want. This ability to adjust unique sliders for individual materials inside of Substance 3D is truly a superpower if you're just getting started in 3D. It allows you to make some dynamic materials easily and in a very, very straightforward fashion. Once you have the basics of the bag where you want it, let's go ahead and add our logo. We can simply drag and drop it onto our coffee bag from either our desktop, or we can go into this pane here, which is our CC Libraries panel. That is the exact same CC Libraries panel you will find in Photoshop and Illustrator. For those that are unfamiliar, the CC Libraries is a cloud-based storage system inside of Adobe's Creative Cloud. And when you use them from Stager to Illustrator to Painter, they're all linked together. So if I update a logo on Illustrator, you will automatically see it done here inside Stager as well. Once we have the logo dragged out to our object, we are given this fantastic widget that allows us to move it, scale it, rotate it wherever we want. While I could do a massive offset logo that wraps around the side of the packaging, I will go ahead and just keep it nice and simple and just put my logo a little bit smaller down here in the corner. Now let's say we have a couple different flavors of coffee we want to demonstrate. It's easy peasy. All we have to do is duplicate the bag a couple times. Then using our handy align and distribute tool, we can equally space them out and offset them slightly. If you are an experienced 3D user, you're probably wondering what this tool has been your whole life. I know I was there just a few weeks ago and I figured it out myself. We also need to duplicate the cardboard material and apply those to our brand new bags. Then we can just simply grab a couple of the colors from our color palette here in the CC library and change the base color of the cardboard on these various flavors. Now that we've got that set up, it's time to lighten stage this scene. We could continue to add 3D props to the scene and then go into our lighting tab, add some digital lights, some image-based lighting. Let's say you don't have time for all that. Let's say you just want to quickly grab a background image maybe from Adobe Stock and insert our 3D objects into that environment. No problem. All you have to do is create a new camera by selecting this little icon at the top of the screen with the camera and the little plus button. 
Then in the background section of the camera attributes, you drop in that photographic backplate. At the top of the camera selection, you will find this matched image button. Let's click that because that will activate Adobe's Sensei AI to do some really cool things. It will first match the photograph's image size. Then it will read the light quality of the original photograph and create a digital version of that lighting for our objects so they feel like they're in the same space. Finally, it will look for visual clues in the photograph to determine the camera position and focal length of the lens. And just like that, it works. This is just a simple JPEG. Again, no special metadata or anything in there. It just provided enough information for the Sensei AI to completely integrate our 3D objects. Now we click our little render tab and choose to render this out as a Photoshop PSD file. Once the render is done, we can export it directly to Photoshop where we not only have our image, but we actually have our CG elements separated from our background as well as these lovely puzzle mats that allow us to isolate and make corrections to each individual object. Okay, great. So that was super easy and fun, but let's dive a little deeper. What if we want to do more than just slap a logo on something? What if we want to use that logo to develop some different looks? All right, let's get into it. For that, let's dive into Substance 3D Painter. Painter is like Photoshop for 3D objects. I like to think about it as my little workshop where I can bring in a single asset, I can paint it, tweak it, and just define the visual look of it in any way that I want. I like this coffee theme, let's keep this rolling. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and grab a coffee cup from the Substance 3D Asset Library. Again, this model coming into Substance Painter can be exported from pretty much any 3D software package. You can use the Substance 3D Modeler. You could also use things like Maya, Blender, Rhino. Any of that software can export formats that can be imported into Painter. Okay, so we have this cup inside Painter. Let's start with a nice general ceramic material for this cup. It's just as easy as it is in Stager. Just search for what you want at the top dialog box and drag and drop it onto the object. If you don't see what you're looking for, you can simply click this Browse 3D Assets button. This will bring up the Creative Cloud Desktop app and allow you to search our digital materials. Once you find what you want, you can simply click Send to Substance Painter and it will select it in the Painter dialog box and we can use it on our object. For the color, I'm gonna use one of our colors from the color palette. Now, in looking at reference, I noticed that coffee cups don't always have the same uniform color across, that they actually leave the inside a little bit white or kind of a cream colored. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and just add our color to the outside a little bit. So for that, we need to make two layers in our layer stack. One for the base porcelain color of the inside, and one that we're gonna change for the colored section of the outside. For the colored section, we will simply color pick one of the colors from our original color palette. Now we just need to create a black mask and tell that black mask where we want it applied to, just like in Photoshop. Now we can easily hand paint that if we want. We can use this handy tool to select individual polygons, or we can select large chunks of the cup that were isolated in the UV map using this selection tool. Now we wanna place our logo on the side of this cup. The easiest way to do that is literally upload it to Painter and then drag and drop our logo file onto our model. If we select base color, it will behave almost identically to what we had in Stager.
button. If we select mask, things get a little more interesting. By placing the logo in the mask, you are saying is do stuff in the area where the logo is, the white area, and don't do anything where the logo is at the black area. The only question is what do we want to do? You could adjust the color and differentiate the logo that way. You could use this mask to drive the height and bump it out a little bit. If you do that, I always add a blur filter to my mask because using a PNG to drive the height can leave the edges a little bit janky and adding a small amount of blur helps it look a little more realistic. I like to also use this mask to be a little subtle about it. You could keep the color and the height exactly as they were in the layer below, and then you simply adjust the roughness and metalness in order to subtly get that logo to show up. I really like to do that when I'm branding objects that have a little bit more of a highbrow lean to them, things like wine bottles and such, that you kind of get your logo and your branding across without really hitting people over the head with it. You can also add a pattern to the cup and switch the logo to divide and allow it to be the negative space in the pattern. You can also use this mask as part of any pre-built substance material to create an endless supply of unique looks. Okay, so in the next part of the demo, we are going to expand things even further by looking at the cup from a whole new perspective. Because perhaps we've been focusing too much on the size of the cup, what if we actually look inside the cup at the coffee itself? Okay, so inside the cup we go. This is where things get interesting. What if we actually wanted to create our nifty logo in the froth of a cappuccino? Okay, I could create multiple layers, one that simulates the coffee, one for the froth, another for the bubbles, but we don't have to go that far. We have a much easier solution for this. Inside our Substance 3D Asset Library, we already have a latte art substance that would be perfect for this. Like all of our assets in the Asset Library, we are not limited to what we see in the preview window. We have complete control over the final look of these substances by simply interacting with the unique sliders that each material has. So let's go ahead and send this over to Substance Painter and start using it. Okay, we drag and drop it onto our model. Now we just need to go into the 2D view and properly position that material where we want it. Now it's time to add our custom logo. For that, it couldn't be easier. There is a spot in our parameters where you can simply drag and drop in your unique logo. Now, the only thing I want to do to this coffee to eliminate any of the bubbles that are kind of half in, half off the edge of the cup is I want to create another layer of the coffee without any bubbles at all. Then I'm going to create a black mask and simply paint in the areas where I want to eliminate bubbles. It's almost like we're erasing bubbles from the coffee, but I'm going to go ahead and do it with a separate layer. And now that I have that looking the way that I want, I can send this over to Substance 3D Stager. To do that, it couldn't be easier. All you have to do is go to File, Send to, Send to Substance 3D Stager. Completely packs it up, opens up Substance Stager, and drops the model completely textured in there. From there, I just created a couple of cameras, one over the top and one to the side. I threw down a ground plane and added a simple wood plank material from the asset library. I wasn't too picky about it since I knew that it would be out of focus given my subject matter. Then I threw out an environment light along with an aerial light in order to create some more shaping on the cup and fall. And that's it. I was all done. So what I just did is my general groundwork for how I do most of my branding work inside the Substance 3D tools. This technique can be repeated over and over again with a huge variety of assets using our Substance 3D asset library. So another example using a similar workflow is taking our logo and putting it into a more traditional work of art. So for that, what I did was I went to the asset library, I grabbed a 3D model of a picture frame, and I also grabbed this, this thick uh, paint material that I was able to download and get into Painter as well. 
So for that, what I did was I created the, you know, I've got the picture frame in here. I went ahead and applied a plastic material for the frame edges itself. And then for the picture as a whole, I went ahead and drag and dropped that paint material onto the canvas and then used the invert of our logo in order to, you know, again, work with that negative space. And then I just took a paintbrush around the edges and just kind of, you know, chewed it up a little bit and made it so it wasn't quite so perfect. Oh, and for the colors of the paint asset, I was able to choose the ones from the color palette. So this ties in nicely. And again, I was able to send that over to Substance Stager and integrate that wall painting into a photographic backplate. And again, by doing this workflow, you're able to kind of effortlessly and seamlessly integrate some really cool branding work into an existing scene. If you are in the apparel industry, this technique can work for you as well. Maybe you want to demonstrate one of those new flippy sequency sweatshirts you see the kids wearing these days. Uh, it's easy to do. All you have to do is grab one of our sequenced fabrics, used our logo as the black mask for it. And if you want, you can actually create two of them, one that has one of our colors, one that has the other one, and rotate it around 180 degrees. This can kind of show off the two-tone colors of the flippy sequins. I bet you there's a better name than flippy sequins, but I'm going to stick with that for now. Then inside the black mask of the upper one, you can simply paint out the areas where you want the secondary color to be exposed. Speaking of fashion, there are a couple of other tools inside Substance 3D Sampler that might help you create some additional customized branding. The first and most straightforward one is our embroidery tool. For that, I can simply import an Illustrator SVG or Photoshop file into Sampler here as a bitmap image. Don't worry if you don't see anything out of the gate. It doesn't appear until you actually add the embroidery tool from our layer stack over here. Then apply the embroidery tool. This will analyze your 2D image and create a patch based on that design. Then I can control how that embroidery patch looks. You can set the number of colors. And in this case, we want to set that to seven because there are seven total colors in our patch. It will separate them into individual colors based on how much of that color is used. So the most color is color one, second most is color two, etc. You can also go in and adjust the individual look of this, like the global scale of this. I'm going to go ahead and increase that to get more threads in there. You can also adjust how thick or how long the threads are. There's this great imperfection slider that you can adjust the jankiness of it. You can also go into the individual color sections and change the embroidery direction. You can also change the orientation of the threads, the height positions, and a bunch of other things. Additionally, if you don't want the entire patch to be embroidery, you can drag and drop different materials in there as well. Like if you didn't want these colored sections to be embroidery, but instead you wanted them to be denim, I simply grab the denim from our asset panel and drag and drop it into the appropriate color section. As a user, it does take a second to figure out which section is which, but you can figure it out pretty quickly by simply moving this denim around the positioning and seeing the results. Once you have everything looking the way that you want, you can export this a couple different ways. One is you can use our send to functionality to send it directly over to Painter to be applied to a garment. The second is you can package it up as a substance material file, an SBSAR, and that can be imported into other 3D tools like Clo or Browseware. Additionally, you could export all the individual maps and plug it into a third party tool that way. Either way, we give you options to allow you to use your creation any 3D application. Another tool that's handy for the fashion peeps is the weave tool. The weave tool allows you the ability to create a custom weave pattern or create one based off of an image. For this, I'm actually going to start off with our pearl and glitter embroidery. Then I'm going to create a custom weave tool in the same stack and use the custom map section to plug in my logo design. And I can go into our custom weave tool. I can adjust the warp and weft. I can adjust the type of thread that's being used. I can make it metallic. I can make it ribbon. Really make it my own and do it however I feel is best. So in summary, these demos were just a quick look at how you could use the Substance 3D tools to create some unique branding images. 
There are countless ways you can use over 9,000 materials in our asset library to create some amazing things and I can't wait to see what you all come up with.